Hi everyone, Simon Keeling here. It's Tuesday the 2nd of October. Thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. As always, the sites get free of charge by the adverts that you see around the screen here. So by you coming back and using the site, using the charts, etc., that's what generates revenue that keeps it free of charge. So thank you for doing that. Um, you probably saw the uh, the tweet I put out earlier on uh, about uh, amusing that I'd written. I call this the elephant in the climate change room. And this is the chart um, I've been looking at for some time. It's um, one that I created this morning. It's of global mean temperature, uh, which is the uh, blue line here, and uh, versus global CO2 here. And it goes from 1959 to 2011, and these are annual figures uh, run along the chart here. We've got temperature anomaly up the side here uh, in 0.01 Celsius, and we've got CO2 running down the left-hand side here. And the problem is that um, from this point onwards, this is 1998, um, just look what happens. You see how temperature levels off, how the anomalies level off, yet CO2 continues to rise. So we've got a bit of a problem in here about the link between temperature and CO2. I'm going to record a, a, another weather school video about this, um, just looking into it in a little bit more detail. Um, but it's just interesting, isn't it? Has that link actually been broken? And if it is, We've got some big questions to answer. Um, anyway, back to the forecast, and um, it really does get into an almost unforecastable stage next week. Um, really is causing some problems. This is the 7 to 10 day mean 500 millibar flow, and it runs from next Tuesday through to Friday the 12th of October. And the problem that we've got here is this is the ECMWF on the left. We've got the GFS on the right here. And uh, notice both of them look, bring a trough, a mean trough out towards the west of the British Isles. Um, so we've got it in here. You can just see the dip in here as well. But notice how the GFS is building heights above normal look across the UK and Western Europe. But the ECMWF gets that trough in and wants to bring those heights down to below normal levels to the west of the UK. Now, <clears throat> by this stage, I was I was looking to see some sort of ridge building through here, and the GFS has got it on there. Um, but if we take a look at the day-to-day uh, -day loop here, this is uh, for the current time. So you see that deep trough that's moving through the country right now, but just watch what happens. Our trough goes eastwards. There's a stack of higher than normal heights come in look towards the end of the weekend and these red colors here have really been built by this flow here this south southwesterly flow which is building these heights this is the area of high pressure that i was thinking was going to pop itself north here we get an undercut of this trough coming underneath into here going into europe bringing them more of a an unsettled flow through europe with probably an area of low pressure developing across central Europe somewhere and a northeasterly flow across the UK but with pressure building towards the north of the British Isles but you'll notice how really that doesn't happen this ridge collapses away we've got too much of a westerly jet going up towards the north and although there are hints from the GFS of a, of a ridge trying to get there into Greenland as well and trying to build to the north of the UK and link in with the ridge across Europe it never really gets going now the big question here is, is this just a phenomena of the model? Is this just that the model dynamics aren't picking up on the idea that this could happen? Um, or is it just that the, the flow up in the pole at the moment is just too strong? So the Arctic Oscillation is just too strong and it's not allowing um, the, the, the ridge to get in. And I, I've got to say, and I've been saying to clients through the course of today, that next week is, is almost running into an unforecastable mode. The weather occasionally goes into these modes where you just can't pin it down. You, you, you actually can't get a handle on what it's going to do. And my concern is that next week is heading into one of those modes and it could be that it's, it's perhaps Friday before we get a better idea as to exactly how the weather develops. And you know, I look at the charts, look at the long ranges, and just can't pick out a model that I could say today, yeah, I prefer that one, let's lean towards it. I, I still think we need to watch for this ridge building and trying to block out somewhere across or to the north of the British Isles with lower pressure going into Europe. But we've got to watch it, we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's just get on to the detail, I suppose, for now, and, and something that we, we perhaps know more about for the next few hours. This is the charts from one o'clock this afternoon. Here's our trough of low pressure out towards the west, and you'll watch as that rain moves its way eastwards, look through the country during the course of this evening and overnight tonight. Now, 
through the course of tomorrow morning into uh, Wednesday morning, we're going to find a front lying through East Anglia on the southern coast of England. This is bringing some wet weather through these locations, and it's quite reluctant to clear during the day. I think brighter spells following in behind, um, some showers for western coast, heavier showers across Scotland, sometimes merging into longer spells of rain, and some showers for northern and western parts of Ireland as well. And then as we go uh, through the course of the day tomorrow, we'll still look, we've got this front affecting southern coast of England. Elsewhere, it's dry through central and eastern areas, but running up these western coasts we've got this risk of showers again and some hefty showers affecting the western parts of Ireland. And then as we go in towards Thursday, so we're going to find still the front look trying to linger through the channel area, but I think it's away from southern coast by then. One or two showers affecting western coast of Wales and England, but generally for most of the country it's dry and we've got some sunny spells. I think as we head on in towards Friday, so we find another area of rain look just coming up the channel. Now this is this again causes some question marks as to how far north this area of rain gets because until the last few hours we were expecting this rain to kind of run from if you took St David's Head in the far southwest of Wales across to the Wash, areas to the south of there being under the heavy rain but now the latest model runs tend to keep the heavy rain onto southern coast of England and just clipping through Kent and Sussex and perhaps just into the great London area so through Surrey as well during the early part of uh, Friday morning. Elsewhere, dry, bright, sunny spells, but some showers affecting western coasts. And then through Friday, cloud and rain just linger across the southern coasts of England, but we need to watch for this being a little bit further north. But generally, we're going to find the cloud and rain lingering across the southern coasts of England. Further outbreaks of rain coming into the southwest as the rain peps up during the afternoon. Some showers, <coughs> excuse me, for northern and western Scotland, for the north and west of Ireland, as well as northwestern England and north and west of Wales. But for many, it is going to be a drier day. Some cooler weather, though, coming through Scotland and Ireland and into that northern and western parts of Wales through the afternoon. Now into Saturday, this ridge tries to build through. Now what that could do is, particularly given that the flow goes into the north or northwest and skies are clear to the north, we could find a frost from central Wales through northern England through Scotland as well. Drier across Ireland, some showers for northern and western parts of Scotland. Some rain affecting southern coasts of uh, the far south coast of England, <coughs> excuse me, and the Channel Isles through Saturday morning. And then into Saturday itself, the ridge gets in properly, builds through the country, and for many areas it's dry, it's fine, and it looks like that ridge is in overnight. Now, it could be that this is the night when we get a widespread frost across many parts of the country, away from the coast. We could be down to close to freezing or just below in many areas. This could be the first widespread frost of the uh, winter season. I think coastal areas stay above freezing and certainly I think uh, southwestern parts of England, perhaps southern Wales and western and southern Ireland will, but clear skies for many areas. And then into Sunday we'll find rain just nudging northwards through western parts of Ireland and the south too, but the area of high pressure holding on for most which brings a fine day through Sunday for many, dry as well but an increasing breeze out towards the west. And then into Monday, well, still got high pressure holding on towards the east look, but this southerly flow from low pressure out towards the west will be bringing some cloud and outbreaks of rain up these western parts of the country. So southwest England, Wales, up through western Scotland and Ireland, I think here rather cloudy, but to the east we should be under the influence of high pressure. So dry once again with some sunny spells. And then latest indications for Tuesday are that probably more persistent rain gets going across Scotland and Ireland with a southerly flow. Um, I think it's western Wales, southwest England, northwest England, the west of Scotland that sees most of that, whereas more central and eastern areas will tend to stay on the drier side. And as I say, it's after this really that we've got to consider what actually happens, because again you see the GFS is hinting at this southerly flow. Well, if this gets in, it, it could well build this ridge up towards the north. I'm trying not to cling to, to this, but uh, I still see this idea of a ridge building up towards the north, the flow going more into the southeast, northern areas becoming dry, the flow then into the east or northeast across England and Wales with some outbreaks of rain during the middle to the end part of next week. No hints of that at all from the model. That's just the way I, I could see this pattern developing. We'll see what happens. But for now, that's enough. So keep the sun shining and uh, bye for now.